Hey YouTube, welcome back to Mr. Terry History, and today we are headed back to history memes. Now this is the most popular of the things I do here on my channel, and for good reason. Memes are awesome, and if they're history memes, that makes them even better. So how this works is over on our Discord server, which you should all join, there's a section where you can submit history memes. And what my mods do is pull some of those, put it into a place that I can see them, and then I show them to you guys, give commentary if I need to. Sometimes I have to ask questions, because sometimes you guys put out some obscure stuff and it's a great way for me to possibly learn about new things. So we'll get started here in just a second. All right, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor and that is Audible. Now there's a good chance you've heard of Audible, but in case you haven't or you need to be reminded, Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Their content ranges from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more. Now Audible members are getting even more with the all new Plus catalog. The Plus Catalog has thousands of select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible Originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, sleep tracks for better rest, and more, all included with the membership. Audible members are going to get one free credit a month that they can use on any title in the premium catalog. Bestsellers, new releases, doesn't matter the price, you're going to be able to keep it forever. With an Audible membership, you're going to be able to download titles and be able to listen to them offline anytime and anywhere. The Audible app is free on your smartphone or in your tablet, and you can listen across the devices without losing your spot. Audible members don't have to worry about using their credits right away either. You can keep your credits for up to a year and use them to binge a whole series if you want. And if you're not loving your selection, you can always swap it out for another. All right, so visit audible.com slash Mr. Terry or text Mr. Terry to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial right now. All right, let's get started with the memes. All right, so, oh man, we got a lot going on here. French government, 1792. Okay, so, all right, French Revolution. We have French Revolution French Revolution started in 1789. And let's look at all the stuff that's going on here. We got war with literally all of effing Europe. True, true. Um, <laughs> basically, yeah, everyone, during the revolution, everyone went at war in Europe. A lot of it was preserved monarchy, the threat of the revolution potentially uh, spreading to other countries. So other monarchies took it very seriously. Even if you didn't like the French themselves, if you were like England, Austria, whatever, um, you didn't like this revolution because this is not a good sign if this is something that's going to be the new norm. So you have this. Um, now you have the allies of the French monarchy, like Austria and stuff coming in. But yeah, they literally were fighting all of Europe. And uh, Napoleon knew all about that coming forward. So we got, all right, okay, we got the sounds cool lot. Okay, so those are the people without pants, by the way. Um, so revolutionaries pretty much, and they had to deal with everything. Okay, you got Louis the Sixteenth. Yep, he was eventually executed in ninety three. So the year after, so they're fighting them. They're fighting the monarchists. Yep, so the people that support the monarchy, the Jacobins, um, Jacobins. They they were the more extreme group in the um, um, kind of in the, during the revolution, more extreme political group. They were one of the earlier ones that were saying that the monarchy should be abolished and France shouldn't even be like a constitutional monarchy. All right, you've got, uh, it says, still no effing bread, but go off, I guess. Yeah, I, I always try to remind my students that, let, let's be honest, the, the, the fueling of this revolution, too, is largely because people are literally starving in France. The bread, um, ingredients to make bread had become extremely scarce due to famine, so um, hanger is a real thing. So I might tell my students all the time. Uh, Lafayette fleeing to Austria, yeah, so you got other leadership heading out the austria situation is always interesting because remember marie antoinette is the queen of france who's also austrian so they took it very seriously of course when this is happening but we're unable to do anything about the execution of course of of her which happened just a few months after him so i don't know what this is from like as far as like the scene itself like it's like a movie or something um i i apparently haven't seen it but I don't know what's going on in this church, but it does make for some pretty good memes. All right, so starting off with style, there a lot of lot to uh, a lot of go in, um, a lot to talk about already. All right, let's pull up a new one. Let's check out this one right here. All right, we got the Drake meme, right where it's like him not, you know, like ignoring or not liking something, and then all right, I got this one. So we got England on annexing Malta. Now, I don't know much about the annexation of Malta, but okay, the next one, England on annexing Gibraltar. <laughs> Gibraltar is basically the opening 
or where I guess you'd say the Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean sort of meet. Um, that's straight water. If you control Gibraltar, which is coming to that southern tip of, of uh, Spain, then you basically control the in and out access of the Mediterranean. And that's always been something that the, the, the British, you know, going back uh, many years fighting, fighting for. And today, um, I think still, don't they, isn't there still an issue where Gibraltar is still like, at least in parts of it, still heavily British and still like controlled, I think by the British, but yeah, something very important. <laughs> nice stuff. All right. What do we got here? We got when you're dead, but then you remember you forgot to delete your hieroglyph history. <laughs> that, that face is great. That's a great one. Your hieroglyphic history or hieroglyph history. You know, that's always a famous thing. It's like, hey, make sure your history is deleted. You don't want people seeing the weird stuff you have on your computer. I like that one. That one's good. <laughs> All right, next one. What we got here? Sorry for my, 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 you know, I'm in the way here. I'll, I'll, I'll move myself here in a second. Okay, the amazing original. Okay, so just looking at these, it looks like we're talking about Islamic empires here. So you get like the Umayyad Caliphate, and you know they're going to spread uh, all through North Africa. So you know after the the death of Muhammad, um, Arabs have controlled all of Arabia, and then right at the, after his death, they quickly, quickly expanded in east and west directions. So east taking out Persia, and then all the way into West Africa, or all the way across West Africa, which you see in the second one, and then into Spain. And then the, th okay, so wait, let's, we got to look at the text. The amazing original. Okay, great. Things got off to a good start. You got this big unified empire. Um, and then the all right sequel with mixed reviews. So this is where they really get expanded. They actually get overextended here. Then you start seeing revolts and, and divisions within the Islamic community, basically saying, hey, we're not going to be unified as a political entity, maybe as a religious group, but not as a political entity. And there's a lot more to it than that. The third film, the crossover, that was surprisingly good. All right, the weird spinoff that was a disaster. Yeah, so this is when they start breaking apart. Uh, we got the... Okay, so I got to move me. Let me move me here for the bottom one here. The Redemption spinoffs. This is like more like Ottoman Empire-ish than the spinoff spinoff. And then the last film that everyone <laughs> hated here. This looks more like... Uh, over here, this, this basically looks like almost like Byzantine Empire with a lot of this, but you know, the Ottoman empire, uh, you know, took over the Byzantine empire and went all the way up to, up to Austria. If not for them winged hussars, right? Cue the music. And then the fan fiction. That's great. Crazy history of, um, rule in the middle East, basically since Muhammad into the, to the, uh, modern day. All right. Good stuff. Speaking of which, Good timing. Boom! Breaking news. Oh, no, oh. The winged hussars have arrived. <laughs> so, um, winged hussars were instrumental in um, pushing back the Ottoman push into um, uh, into Central Europe around uh, Vienna, and this group, the winged hussars, were known for coming in late. And they had these horse. The, they rode these horses, and they had these big like wing things, which I, I remember watching videos about about the wings that they had. Like, what use did they have? Like, some people saw you know maybe it was just aesthetic, but possibly like having to do a sound with the horses. I don't know. I got to look into that more. But anyway, they're pretty interesting looking. So, but yeah, the winged hussars are. They should make a song about this. Okay, if you don't know. Look up Sabaton, Winged Hussars. It's a great song um, about the arrival and kind of the saving of the day uh, of the um, by the Winged Hussars in the battle. Gosh, now it's in my head. <laughs> All right, next one. What we got? Boom. We got General Ulysses S. Grant. Okay, big old, big old monster here. And then we got General Robert E. Lee. So this is the United States Civil War right here. Ulysses S. Grant led the Northern Union, as they were called. And then General Robert E. Lee, the secessionist confederacy. And then what do we got? Uh, all right, so we got 
so this is from Thor. Oh, this is um, from, uh, gosh dang it, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Well, at least it's got the rocket raccoon, right? And Thor. I guess it's a mix. It could be anything. The Marvel Universe. Okay, it says the rest of the Union and Confederate generals. So is the statement that they're just like, these two are leading it and the rest are just kind of like, all right, let's go. I got to understand the context here. What's the emotional response? Just like, all right, you guys go and lead us to victory, hopefully. Because in the end, the war really did come down to these two generals. Um, the Union was known for, and, and Lincoln was known for just going through a bunch of generals that he didn't think were getting the job done. And eventually comes to settle with Ulysses S. Grant. And General Sherman, of course. Next meme. Boom. All right, we got... No one. Okay, and then World War One generals. This little maneuver is going to cost us five hundred thousand men. <laughs> so, okay. World War One was known for this war. That when it comes to military pushes, very little was able to be done, and any pushes that you did have had insane amount of deaths. Look at something like the Battle of Verdun. Where you have like you can do the math where it's like I don't know hundreds of people per meter or something thousands of people per meter these insane numbers of death and yeah little maneuvers um, are gonna do that now I, I, if I remember right because this is from Interstellar right because this is McConaughey and I'm trying to remember if he was referring to because there was a lot about relativity and uh, traveling at speed of light and how it changes time how it, it changes your relationship with time. I'm trying to remember if this was in, in referral to them flying to certain places where gravity was going to have a big effect, which then, like, cost you years in in the time back on Earth. I love that movie. I need to go watch it, but if it was that specific scene. But I see the connection. That's pretty good. Cool, cool. All right. Next one. When she tells you she's not into middle-aged guys. <laughs> So from the Middle Ages, you got some Middle Ages night. Sag. Sag. All right, here's a looks like a longer one here. Let's uh, see what we can find. All right, Netherlands and Belgium, I guess. So you got Netherlands. Uh, no, go away. And then Germany. Okay. Gib Clay. What does that mean? Gib Clay? Anyways, Germany's saying no. Okay, let's go down some more. Go into the ocean. Go in here. I am not here a no. I don't get it. Okay, one of the things you can do in these um, in these meme videos, you guys, is write in the comments about what I'm missing on memes. Something to do with the relationship with the the ocean. I mean, yeah, they're like basically under sea level. Nobody else wants them except the ocean, or what? Who did this one? This was from a member called Gandhi Dolph. Sometimes I miss it. Anyways, let me know. All right, new one. All right, we got Doge. All right, what's Doge doing here? We got Australia and World War One. I. I just killed 17 men with my combat knife. Austria, emu, emu. You have to say it like that, otherwise the Australian um, hipsters get mad. Ah, big scary, or ah, scary big chicken. All right, so australia famously did some butt kicking in world war one and did a lot of fighting um on the side of the british empire but then there's that funny funny thing that's basically become a meme about the the emu war they had this crazy overpopulation of emus that were destroying like farmland and stuff and uh <laughs> they didn't really know how to deal with it uh, if you don't know about that if you want to see a reaction video or if you want to see original video oversimplified did a little video on the emu war and it's, it's pretty funny where it was, like, devastating. And people say, like, the emus won the war against Australia and the Australian government. It's pretty awesome. But, yeah, good stuff there. All right, here we go. 
let's see what we got. We got some philosophy. Oh, we got some. Uh, okay, we got some uh, Greek mythology going on. Hera, why are or why are there so many demigods around? Zeus, just <laughs> okay. So Hera is Zeus's main wife, but Zeus of Greek mythology, of course, the god of the sky and kind of god of the gods in a way, was of course known for having children with a lot of mortals and demigods are these people that are part god and part um part immortal right so there's a lot of them around because zeus slept around a lot and looks like his wife's like hey why are there so many of these and he's just you know oh who knows <laughs> sorry everyone knew that hera was not unaware of her husband's infidelity all right here we go do, do, do we got Soviet Union tries to invade Finland. Finland, you picked the wrong house, fool. <laughs> you know what? I, I mentioned this because we, we were starting to talk. We've been talking about World War II and uh, AP history, AP World History, and how forgotten um, in, in a, it, with, with how much you have to study of World War II, um, how uh, Finland's success in being able to defend itself very well against the Soviet Union. And yeah, they, they uh, that's where you get um, all kinds of great stories about resistance and the, the white death, the sniper and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, Finland is one of those places that was uh, very difficult for the Soviet unions. And this is from GTA like three or four, right? But very true. <laughs> okay. All right. What do we got next? Let's pull up this one. Okay, Persia. Are you two friends? Welcome to the Delian League. Sparta, no. Athens, yes. Okay. All right, so the Delian League has a complicated history. The Delian League was originally formed and kind of organized by Athens as a resistance to... Uh, the invasion of Persia. So it was like a, a United Nations, if you will, of city-states of Greece to fight Persia and the Persian Wars. And so, yeah, unified, you know, the Greek city-states. Then after the war, the Delian League was really, really exploited by Athens, and they basically used all the payments and stuff to finance their incredible rebuild and their golden age with um, Pericles at the helm, and they used it to build stuff like the Parthenon. And it caused a lot of strife, ends up kind of breaking it up. And then you get the famous uh, civil war called the Peloponnesian War in in, uh, in Greece. And Sparta creates their, their you know, they're going to kind of break off and create their own league, the Peloponnesian League. And then Athens is going to stick with the Delian League. And then you get the, uh, uh, you get the, the war, um, the Peloponnesian War. Now, okay, so we get some Star Trek going on, but the top part is this from Star Trek as well. This this lady. I don't know what the, the sometimes the background is. Anyway, there's there's your history lesson of the of this. All right, let's find the next one. Okay, this looks like a good one. All right, it says, uh, when both your pistols misfire and the president starts coming at you with a cane. <laughs> Do you remember what's, this is Star Wars, but like, like what Star Wars scene this was. So this seems to be in reference to President Andrew Jackson. So Andrew Jackson was not liked by a lot of people, both in his time and modern times. But he was attacked by basically an assassin whose gun misfired. Um, like both guns, like guns were very unreliable and it failed to kill him. And the president like counterattacked him and started beating him like within an inch of his life with his cane. Cause Andrew Jackson had a cane and I guess that's what this guy's doing. He's just like charging without his, his weapon or, you know, imagine this guy having a cane, I guess. And you got Andrew Jackson. So that's been kind of one of the famous stories. All right. Next one. We got some, we got Shakespeare's. Okay, to be or not to be. And it is Shakespeare. He doesn't know. <laughs> that is the question. To be or not to be. Nice, straight, right to the point. Famous line of, uh, of Shakespeare. 
All right, new one. Let's see what we got here. When you lose World War I and your 600-year-old empire falls. Oh, Ottoman Empire into Turkey. Okay. <laughs> so this is the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire, you know, has this name. And Ottomans, that's like the footstool. The name for the, like, uh, the styles of, of footstools. And this is the famous Homer Simpson one where he, he goes and was talking to Ned Flanders, comes out of the bushes like suddenly and then like goes back into the bushes, bushes. And it, it's kind of been famous where like where somebody changes into something else. So he'll go. Homer comes out of the bushes and then goes back in the bushes and comes out as something else. So you got the Ottoman Empire is like going away and then reemerging as Turkey. Because that's what happened after World War One. Ottoman Empire fell and that brought the uh, birth of the Republic of Turkey. I like that. That's great. All right. Let's see our next one. Sneak 100. <laughs> okay. So it's like a tank that's like disguised as, as like a transport truck. That's awesome. Were people buying that? I mean, I guess from far away, I mean, you can't tell the difference. I mean, it's very loud and slow moving, but yeah, you got a hundred sneak rating. It's like, you don't want them to know there's tanks. You want it to be a surprise, so mask it up is something else. That's great. All right, next one. All right, we got the uh, the guys that are the arm wrestling or like joining up together thing, marching through Georgia, General Sherman and Russia. Oh, okay. So we're talking about two different Georges here. Okay, so General Sherman, I mentioned him earlier in the video, was known that. In the American Civil War, President Lincoln basically told General Sherman to destroy everything down in the South. And Georgia is one of the southern states. So it went through and, and um, just devastated everything. Then you have, like, the country Georgia, which Russia took over. So they're both, like, taking over Georgia's, just different version of Georgia. That's clever. All right, we got some uh, Sponge Robert. Thomas Jefferson trying to negotiate the Louisiana Purchase from the French in 1803. I have $3. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So Thomas Jefferson was originally trying to just buy the city of New Orleans. And this would have been from Napoleon. And uh, gave money um, or offered money to for, for that. And when the delegates uh, eventually got to Napoleon, Napoleon's like, hey, I'll just sell you all of Louisiana, which is basically today was, well, was back then, but today is the middle third of the United States and had to pay a little bit more, but ended up getting an incredible deal on it. It went from, I forget how much the, the deal was for the original proposed deal for Louisiana, three, six million dollars, can't remember in there. And then, and then uh, Napoleon's like, hey, I'll like, you know, quadruple that or whatever and i'll give you all the territory i have in north america and it's a big a, a big uh a, a huge financial purpose or a purchase very beneficial all right let's just get a few more here there's a ton in my queue by the way um this is we are in kind of late february right now and the last one i did of this i think the last meme video was like the end of November. So, I mean, I got so much content. I got content for days coming up, but keep them coming. Okay. What do we got here? Um, wait, it's all just endless suffering always has been. What's the dude's name? Okay. This is from the Greek mythology. The guy that had to keep pushing up the stone. He was basically, I forgot his name. It's going to come to me once I'm done with the video here, but yeah, he has to pull this, push the stone, but then it always ends up like falling back and he's endlessly trying to like push it back up. So <laughs> that's pretty good. Like I've seen this meme going around where it's like, this is usually earth in the background where this image is. And there's this astronaut that like comes to some realization about earth. And then the other astronaut is he's not looking like shoots him. It's always like it's some realization. And then the, the guy shooting him is like, yep, always has been. What's this from? All right, next one. All right, back with some like Disney-ish memes here. When the Yuan Dynasty finally collapses. Oh, yeah. It's all Ming. <laughs> okay, so the Yuan Dynasty is the Mongol dynasty that ruled over China. So they had the Song Dynasty. The Yuan Dynasty was the Mongol rule. And the Ming Dynasty are the one that kicked out the Mongols. 
Um, so, yeah, that makes sense. So the Ming Dynasty replaced the Yuan Dynasty. Nice. All right, we're going to do, like, two more. Okay, what do we got here? Um, okay, I think I'm blocking the way. I'll, I'll scroll down to... Okay, so we got, why is the final boss of Mario a fire-breathing, spiky-backed turtle with horns? And the whole game revolves around killing turtles. Just why? The dog. Oh, it's the turtle ships from Korea. Admiral Yi. So you can see in the background, I don't know why it's a dog necessarily. I mean, I guess he's just traumatized. We can see in the back, um, the Koreans had these ships called turtle ships. And they were these iron-clad cannon ships that were awesome so it had like this like iron kind of covering on the top which made it really great um defensively to repel fire but then it was loaded up with these cannons and the famous story of admiral yi and his great uh um, korean admirals he was able to defeat the japanese even though they were always incredibly outnumbered by the way if you want to learn more about this and turtle ships and things i did a reaction video to the extra history series on admiral yi it was really really cool um but yeah the turtle ships are awesome it's also when I started playing Age of Empires 2, I, I was I would when I first started playing, I loved playing as the Koreans and water maps because you got to build these as a unique unit. So that was awesome. Alright, we're gonna end with one more. Because just taking a glance here. I I c I'm I i i have not read it yet. I just I see in my peripheral vision because it's me. Great Britain and France. After Hitler violates the Munich Agreement and invades the rest of Czechoslovakia. Sad face? Why am I doing sad face? <laughs> anyway, okay, so those are always interesting, the ones they make memes out of me. All right, so historical context. Um, Adolf Hitler, when him and his party take power in the 1930s, were violating agreements that were made in the Treaty of Versailles that ended uh, World War One, And part of that was um, Germany moving troops or annexing places, of course, that they were not supposed to. Starts with, like, the Rhineland, and then it takes Austria, and then the Sudetenland. Now, the Sudetenland was the part of the newly created Czechoslovakia that was ethnically German. And at that point, there was the, the Munich the meeting or conference in Munich, Germany, which, by the way, is the only time Hitler met with allied leaders. So you had these leaders of Great Britain and France that met with him, Neville Chamberlain being kind of one of the big ones as the prime minister of Great Britain, basically making a deal saying, all right, like you can keep these territories because they are ethnically German. But if you invade anything else like the rest of Czechoslovakia, then that you are in a breach of that agreement and will have war and then very promptly you know a few months later adolf hitler invades the rest of czechoslovakia thus kicking off world war one in europe well i guess technically it's the next they take Czechos run through czechoslovakia and then september 1st 1939 the invasion of poland is it but this was the violation of the agreement that was made that everyone was hoping this munich agreement was going to avoid war it's the whole appeasement process if you learned about that in school and people were hoping and neville chamberlain he he was you know, adamantly saying that, you know, we had peace for our time and we avoided another war and all this. And of course it doesn't happen. And sad face. There you go. All right, you guys, thanks a lot for the memes. Um, if you have more memes, let's keep them coming. I got a good backlog here, but keep them coming. What you need to do is join our discord server. There's a link down below and you'll see in the channels, there's a history meme section and go ahead and put your memes in there. Make sure, you know, they're not too dark that they could think of it. Like they should be school appropriate think of it that way because i actually like to use a lot of these in my class too but anyways put those in there um, and then the mods will take some of those they put it into another place that i see i don't look at these beforehand because they're genuine reactions but they pull some of the good ones there and then i can see them and make uh, more videos if you like to see these videos again in the comments let me know if you like the meme videos there i think you do by the amount of views we got and um Appreciate you being here. Again, thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Again, a link is down below to um, you can try out Audible. There's a bunch of great history uh, audiobooks and and things that you can check out too, as well as just of course any other topics or other genres that you want. But definitely check out Audible. I think you'll really like it. All right, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.